So today, I'm going to show you how I made this. This is a tutorial that I've been meaning to do for quite some time, and I'm finally getting around to it. How to do lightning in Minimator. And rather than using textures and stuff like that, we're going to actually build a bolt of lightning right in Minimator. So let's get started. So here we are at Minimator, and what I wanted to do was build a bolt of lightning using just stuff in Minimator itself. So the way I went about doing that is going to the crafting bench, grabbing a white cube and spawning that in. So then I had to name it and then I went to the scale. I brought down the parameters and then as you can see here, I'm just rescaling it and trying to get the, the long shaft kind of look that we would want for a bolt of lightning. I uh, decided to bring the brightness up because uh, you know, shouldn't really show shadows or anything on it. And then I'm just kind of orienting it and getting things set up just to be how you would want it to be. We wanted the scale from the top down, so I went ahead and rotated it. And I'm just making the final tweaks on the scaling. So then I went down here. We're going to duplicate each part. And then as you can see here, I'm going over to the properties. And we're going to parent this to the main part of the lighting. This is basically going to be the root of the lightning rig as you might say and uh, we're going to turn off cast shadows and uh, that way we don't have any of the lighting casting shadows on the bolt it's supposed to be bright so we shouldn't have it you know making shadows elsewhere it should be casting light not receiving it so then basically i'm going to take the second part that's parented and just orient it to the right way that we want it to be it's inheriting the scale and the rotation so really all we have to do is just make the scale all back to one by default and then we can adjust it however we see fit as you can see here i'm just adjusting the z to make it shorter or longer but uh, otherwise it should follow suit from whatever it's parented to as you can see here each single increment is going to be parented to the one before it rather than every part parented to the main root it's kind of like the uh, ender dragon's tail if you spawn in that you'll see kind of that logic there um, so that way it'll actually come into play later on when we want to scale the bolt as a whole It'll all respond accordingly rather than having to affect them all with their own individual rotation points Hopefully that makes sense. So anyway, just so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing I basically speed through this where we're just adding more parts and giving it the bins and misshapen nests that we want and uh, as you can see there we've got a full solid bolt of lightning but I wanted to add a little bit more detail. I didn't want it to just be one straight up piece of uh, you know, lightning bolt. I want to have little arcs coming off of it. So I went to this point here and I duplicated it and uh, I'm gonna remove the other parts. You don't really have to do this, but I just want to start with uh, just one. So as you can see there, it parented to that part still and we're just gonna bring it out, rotate it away and, and adjust the size of it. I wanted it to be a little bit smaller than the other parts. So I made it a little bit thinner and then we adjust the length and we're going to repeat the same process just duplicating it and then parenting it in a hierarchy kind of thing like that and uh as you can see here i'm just gonna basically build the little arc here where uh you know you just want it to look as natural as possible just have little pieces coming out uh it doesn't have to be 100 percent realistic of course it's just the way you want to do it however you want it to look i just kind of winged it and went with whatever i thought looked interesting to me but uh, yeah, there you go. So basically I just made a couple of these, one further up that's a little bit smaller and then one further down that might be a little bit more bigger, more bigger uh, with some other stuff going on. But uh, there you go, and there it is. And then as you can see, when I rotate or move the root, the whole part of the lightning there is uh, moving the way I would want it to. So as you can see here, I'm just setting up the keyframes. We have the initial keyframe set to be invisible and then we have the lightning appearing. We make it become visible when we want it to. And so what I'm doing here is actually having it scaled way up and then on the second keyframe it comes down to the length that we want so it kind of has a little bit of a you know striking downward that's not 100% realistic you know if you actually know how lightning really works that's not exactly how it works but it uh it serves the effect pretty well and it happens pretty fast just over a couple of keyframes so no need to worry about that. It's just an added little effect to kind of show that it's coming from somewhere and not just appearing. And then basically all you do is just set up your keyframes how you want to, where you want it to be invisible, where you want it to be visible to kind of have a bit of a strobe-like flashing kind of effect. Another thing that I wanted to do was sort of gradually dissipate at the end. Initially I was trying to use the brightness for this and I'm just kind of messing around with it at this point and making some final adjustments, but that ends up not working. So I went ahead and fixed that later on, which we'll get to in a little bit. But as you can see here, I wanted to mess with the background. We're just getting all the settings the way we want to. Instead of going with the nighttime to make it dark, I changed the color of the sunlight, 
we changed the ambient color and things like that. We brought the fog in with a custom color and things just to give it a little bit more of a stormy kind of look. And uh, then I brought in some particles for our rain, which we just used the default kind of template rain particles there. Basically, you can just play around with this, go into the particle editor. Uh, we need to get the size and the spawn rate and all those things set up. I adjusted some of the settings for when the particles actually die off and things like that. It really depends on how you set up your scene, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here, but you may want to adjust that to your personal project, whatever it is you got going on. Then I spawned in a point light in order to get the actual lighting effect that we want from the lightning. I tried uh, parenting it first, but that kind of ended up not working, so later on you'll see that I don't have it parented anymore. But uh, basically you just want that to come in and mimic the same physics or whatever you want to call it of your lightning bolt. So as you'll see here, I'm just kind of placing keyframes and adjusting the brightness and the, the range and all that stuff for the light, just so it corresponds well enough to the lightning in order to give us a realistic effect, or at least that's what we're hopefully going for here. And as you can see here, I finally figured out that I'm just going to have to not deal with the brightness for the bolt anymore. So I went through and selected all the parts of the lightning bolt and then I come over here and tick alpha and color. Technically alpha is the only one that I needed to use but color can also come in handy if you wanted to adjust the color of the lightning bolt as well. And then as you can see here I'm adjusting the alpha to give me that slight dissipating effect and so when the lightning bolt is done it kind of sort of fades out and uh, then disappears. And I just mess with some of the keyframe transitions. It's not really that big of a deal but I just decided to see what could give me the best results. And uh, I found that the one point light wasn't giving me the full effect that I wanted to. So I went ahead and duplicated that and I uh, added it around, moved it around. I turned off render shadows because we just wanted to fill in the light of the scene, kind of have more flashing going on the Steve character there and stuff. So it really depends on how your scene set up, but I found that to be helpful and to give me the lighting that I wanted. So there you have it. That's how you can make a custom lightning bolt effect for a thunderstorm or whatever you want to do in Minimator all by itself, no other programs or anything else. Hopefully that helped you. What do you think, Creeper? Creeper agrees.